so this might explain a little bit of the mystery of why it's it wasn't so super smooth. It's just a one single washer. Um, my Cold Steel, you know, Ultimate Hunter and AK-47 and all those others are a million times as smooth as smoother than the Spyderco, but they do have the Foster's Bronze washers with Teflon running. So I don't know why they didn't bring uh, Teflon washers with it. That kind of sucks, but not a huge deal. So I guess I'll just wipe these clean and let's give a give a nice good squirt of WD-40, and then it's good to go. Okay, so wiped it down clean a bit. I'm just gonna do a tiny bit of this. There we go. Just gonna let that. So can penetrate a bit. That's right, boy. Get in the nice and deep like. Sorry, getting a little too excited with the nudiness of the knife here. Here's the inside of the Spyderco. Made of chief, man, you can really see the giant uh, back spring they put on there. Yeah, even though it's lock backs are easy and supposed to be simple to take apart, this one was really uh, hard to take off. I had to get the Leatherman to grab onto the knurling on this Kershaw tool to actually twist off the body screws, and then I had to use the uh, flathead end of the uh, screwdriver to raise up the G10 and like squeeze it off in between to get this pin to lift off because you know I, I just got this thing it's brand new well not anymore I disassembled it but it's uh, the action is really shitty uh, it's not spider go smooth and it's really sticky and slow so I just want to see what the heck's going on in here uh, just looks like I need to oil up the Foster's bronze washers a bit there. Not sure if that's a serial number or a batch number, but that's pretty cool to see. And looking at that lock interface, how tight and neat that is. A little bit of jimping up on that lock bar as well. The G10 is nice and smooth on here, so I don't know why it was giving me, you know, issues opening and closing it. Probably just my guess is just that steel liners are probably just a little bit more smooth to run on with Frosted Bronze washers or whatnot. Anyways, I'll let you guys I'll let you guys know how this goes. So if your knives aren't super smooth, grab your Frosted Bronze washers, wipe them off with some paper towels, and if you wet a ceramic rod, you just keep rubbing it on the ceramic rod and eventually you will get a mirror polish on that and just remember to do both sides <coughs> kinda even pressure so you don't uh, disform them so they stay flat There you go, back to normal, centered, and smooth, just the way you expect from Spyderco. Problem solved. There we go, so I got a bit of better light there. So just another quick and a little overview on this guy. Uh, I was hoping the Native Chief was going to be another replacement for a Spyderco PM2. Uh, it's not quite so yet. I'm still getting used to this. Um, maybe it's something about the long needle, needle-shaped blade, or maybe it's kind of this uh, ovular shape. I do like the Native series. And I really enjoyed handling this the first time I saw one, but the one I got 
It was just something about the blade that didn't, it just wasn't quite right. I know backlocks aren't the smoothest knife in the world, but this one was bad. So I took it apart and I had to basically grab the phosphorus washers, the bronze washers, and I had to really work away on them, uh, just polishing them on a ceramic stone to get this thing basically smooth. Uh, it did arrive perfectly, like, centered. And you can't really... There we go. Yeah, so it's centered. Let's just go over the spec. So it's a G10 handle. Uh, it does not have any uh, secondary liners or anything in there. Just straight up G10. You do have that aluminum backspacer. It's got the hourglass four-way position pocket clip, so up, down, left, or right side carry. Uh, you got two body screws, an extra three depending on which side of the pocket clip you have on. You got a small extra pin here for a bit of stability. If the back lock is nicely positioned, like a little more than halfway up the back, so you can get a really nice, firm, comfortable grip on it while you're using this thing. Um, easy enough. It's all Torx bits to take apart if you need to maintain it. Uh, kind of the flaw I see is that you've got a double-sided uh, pivot screw system here. Which I just much prefer what Cold Steel does for their back locks. You know, you have one flat side, you have the tube, and then you only have one pivot screw to worry about. It's just less to manage and worry about. It's more... Um, it's just more stable that way, I think. You know, having that entire bar to sit on and it's completely secured on one side. Uh, nice, you got some nice jimping on the top here. There's actually a little bit on the back bar itself and a little, and then the rest is on the knife blade. Big spidey hole for deployment. I really like how you've got the jimped four-finger troil. So even though it's a big, like nine inches overall, four ounce blade with four ounces of of blade so four four inches all the way from you know this ricasso area to the tip with 3.5 inches of actual cutting edge so it's still very capable knife obviously a little more tactical for sure um not exactly meant for slicing apples or cheesecake and sharing with your friends per se but you know it does a great job of uh being an EDC knife, you know, using it as your food prep knife, it really excelled with that, with its flat, full flat grind. It does have a pretty narrow shape overall, although it is, a I think, about 30% bigger than its brother, the, the native. Um, so I do think it is a bit of an improvement. You know, a little bit bigger size is always nice. However, I just wish that, uh, see, there we go. You, ju you just have to get used to the positioning of the handle and you can almost spidey flick it if I get sort of you know you know, use my right hand so with your dominant hand after I got this thing lubed up and polished the washers and reset the screws and everything you know very smooth to open now not like it was super stiff before and the more you keep using it too the more the uh, G10 is going to kind of rub on those washers. And over time, that'll actually kind of loosen them up by rubbing on that surface to polish them. So the more you use it, the more you open it, flick it on the couch, watching a movie, uh, the smoother it's going to get. Uh, I just like that cheeky slash cringe zip tie mod. It's pretty much the only like living meme in, in the knife world. Uh, people hate it. I love it personally, just because, you know, adds that a bit of ridiculous customness to it. It's just cheeky. Having that extra thumb stud option and waving it out of pocket. So, of course, the one time, there we go, the one time when you want to be able to do something, like Spidey Flick, this chief, it doesn't, it doesn't want to do it. And that's kind of the danger is I've cut myself a few times because it'll, you'll, it'll want to open and then it gets opened a little bit 
then your finger migrates into the handle. So you can see I got myself there. And then that back spring just closes down on your finger again. So you really got to make sure you're pinching on onto that pocket clip and then and then flicking it out. So um, I don't think this will be a long time keeper, unfortunately, just because, you know, I wasn't happy with the amount of modifying I had to do with this knife just to get it smooth and operable. Because